Chatting with Chopper, and we're back here with Joe Bruin again for another day. Hello, Joe. Hey, what's going on, man? Thank you for having me. Appreciate you doing this. Oh, I appreciate you being here. We did quite a marathon the last time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Be nice to touch on some other things that uh, we didn't get to, and uh, sure covered a lot. That's for sure. You've done so much. You've been everywhere, around for a long time. There's so much to cover. Yeah. It's been a hell of a ride, that's for sure. All right, let's jump right in here. And uh, let's uh, start with, what's some of your favorite local venues? Local venues, um, I mean, near and dear to my heart, obviously, the American Legion and Seekonk. You know, it's a small venue. It's not flashy by any means, but... Uh, you know, a lot of history there with uh, many wrestling shows, you know, prior to when I was running there with the HWF. You know, you had Renegade Wrestling Alliance there. You had, uh, I know Mike Spada did it a WWA show. Um, South Coast or Yankee, one of those might have even run there before. Um, NCW, APCW during my booking days um, and ring announcing days for them. Uh, out of that same venue. So a lot of history there. Um, of course, the, the Good Time Emporium in Somerville, Massachusetts. I used to go to those shows for NECW, New England Championship Wrestling. Um, I was actually uh, there for, uh, there was one time where uh, they had John Cena wrestle as prototype um, before he was John Cena. Um, so it was kind of cool to be a part of uh, New England Championship Wrestling would bring like a lot of up and coming talent, a lot of talent from other areas. Um, so, you know, any of those shows where they had like high profile people that, you know, kind of went on and make uh, a mm -hmm. career out of it. Um, I was able to be there for a lot of those shows. So that was pretty cool. But Good Time Emporium had such a cool feel to it. And uh, Sheldon hit it right on the money by running there. It was just uh, such a unique venue, you know, a huge gaming area. They had a bar, they had a, a restaurant area, and then separate rooms that you could kind of run the wrestling show in. Um, the NWA New England put on a uh, Tony Rumble Memorial event that I was also there for. And uh, that was also at the Good Time Emporium. So um, I remember having lunch before the show one time and Joel Gertner was sitting across from me and uh, spilled some mustard <laughs> on uh, I believe on his shirt and on the floor there and he was kind of pissed off and that was one of my earliest memories of the good time emporium I was you know a young kid back then but uh, definitely some cool memories there and uh, Wonderland Dog Tracks in Revere Massachusetts of course the home of uh, ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling for quite some time, but I got to be in there a few times, once with uh, Chaotic Wrestling. Um, I was doing backstage interviews, kind of hanging out with the uh, the ring crew. I, I think I went to the show with maybe Mr. Biggs or Anthony Rufo, somebody who brought the ring. Um, and then I was also there again for PCW, Primal Conflict Wrestling. Some good memories for that show as well. Interviewed, did a bunch of interviews backstage that night with Ali Mohammed and Gino Martino, uh, the Millennium Killers, uh, managed Sandy, uh, I'm sorry, interviewed Sandy Starr that night. Um, East Coast Intensity, Jose Perez, Kevin Charisma, Sudley Steve Stallion. I uh, even got to do an interview that with King Kong backstage, which was uh, certainly a highlight at that point for me. Um, and there was this really unique uh, scenario when Chaotic Wrestling ran at the uh, Wonderland Dog Tracks. I was backstage at the show. Ricky Steamboat was there. He was a special guest referee for, you know, one of the main events. And I'm sitting backstage. I want to say it was Gino Martino sitting at a chair next to me in the dressing room to my left. And then to my right, John Cena is sitting right next to me uh, when he was prototype still. And he was on that chaotic show. And right in front of me was King Sleazy. I don't know if you remember King Sleazy. He was a midget wrestler uh, that wrestled with uh, 
Kings Are Us at the Survivor Series with one of Jerry Lawler's, you know, he's a miniature Jerry Lawler, had the crown, the cape, the whole nine. And uh, so there I am. It's me, Gino Martino, John Cena, and King Sleazy. If you could say who the, who's the most random crew you could put together for a conversation, that might be it. It doesn't really get any more random than that. But, uh, you know, definitely a cool memory, though. Very unique. And so, yeah, places like that. Good Time Emporium, Wonderland, Dog Tracks, the Legion and Seacon. You know, some of my favorite places. Yeah, of course, been to them all. Since you bring up uh, the dog track, I have to ask, were you there for the infamous mass transit incident? No, I actually never went there for an ECW show, even though they ran off in there. And oddly enough, I've only been to one ECW show ever. Um, I just, for whatever reason, I, I never got to one. I know they'd even run kind of close to me with Fall River and different areas, but uh, the only time I got to ECW was at the very last stage of its uh, existence, pretty much. I want to say it was 2001, you know, or 2000, somewhere in that area, and it was in New Hampshire. It was a New Hampshire show on, like, a hockey rink or something. I don't know if it was the I Center or the Ice Center or something like that. Um, but I remember bumping into Rich Palladino there, bumping into... Uh, Jose Perez, I know New Jack, Tommy Dreamer were there on the card. Um, but at that point, there weren't as many high-profile ECW guys. I do remember kind of a lot of fill-ins. You know, Chili Willie was there, maybe the Baldies. But I remember New Jack and Dreamer kind of being the top two uh, tier talents there for that night. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Chili Willie was the one I was going to name, too. I remember that exact time. I kind of remember that show. I didn't go to it, but I remember. I think I had a tape, a fan cam of it. Yeah. You know, it was a heck of a show to get to. I remember I'm pulling in with my buddy Ryan, and we're asking for directions. You know, this was kind of still before GPS and stuff. So, you know, we're like, uh, excuse me, do you know where the eye center is? Because it said on the directions, the eye center. And the guy goes, oh, you mean the ice center? And I'm thinking, okay, well, I, you know, starting off the word ice, sure, ice center. So he tells us where to go. We go there. There's nothing, you know, by that name. And well, we get to the location that he sends us to, and we refer to it now at that point as the ice center. And the guy there goes, oh, you mean the eye center? <laughs> I said, okay, well, yeah, the eye center, you know, that's what we were looking for originally. And, uh, some other guy told us it was the ice center. He goes, well, I don't know what the ice center is, but there is an ice center over here. So he tells us how to get there, kind of go around the corner. Yeah, it's right around the corner, you know. So it took us like an hour and a half. We're in the vicinity of it, and we had no idea where we were going. Nobody around knew what was going on, but I made it to the show. <laughs> that sounds like me and uh, Ed trying to find the CZW show and. I think it was Kingsboro. Did you go to that show? Kingsboro, no. No, never been to a CTW show either. But it was the same way. We were like middle of nowhere asking for directions. We were going all over the place. We finally found it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about wrestling. You know, sometimes these shows are just way out there and in the middle of nowhere, like you said. Primal Conflict was something that, you know, it was more of a, it's hard to explain. I guess it kind of was like an ECW or had a strong following of this core base of fans that, I mean, the place would be packed. I remember uh, the Americal Civic Center in Wakefield, Massachusetts, and I ring announced that show. That was Primal Conflict, and they had three, 400 people there. I mean, they had quite a following. Um, you know, for Primal, and uh, that was a big, a big one. Tommy Dreamer versus Jose Perez. I remember ring announcing that uh, Scarecrow against Balls Mahoney, I believe. And then uh, there was a four-way, I believe, with John Cronus and Belvis Wesley, and New Jack, and maybe one other guy. It might have been Dave Cronus or Astro Man or something. Um, but that was a big show. That was an awesome show. I also got to ring announce uh, some of the shows at Club Stars. 
in Johnson, Rhode Island. Those were obviously smaller scale shows. Um, Jamie Payne and Nemesis would uh, be in a lot of the high profile matches. Jose Perez, Kevin Charisma. Um, I was there at that show when Jamie Payne uh, caught fire in the fire incident. Um, I was literally right there at ringside uh, standing up in the air. That was a sight to see. I mean, that was intense. Everybody's dialing 911 on their cell phones. And, and, you know, you could smell the burnt hair and the burnt flesh. And Jamie himself is screaming, obviously. Uh, people in the audience are screaming. I mean, it was just, it was chaos. And, you know, what an experience. It was just, I didn't even know how to react. What's, you know, what? And I was still, you know, at that time, probably 17 or something, you know, I was new to the whole uh, scene still. And I was kind of blown away from the whole experience. And immediately after that incident, he was rushed into the kitchen, which was right behind the curtain. They had this huge kitchen area for the club. So it was a, quite a large room and they're, you know, dousing him with towels and water. And, you know, I think they filled up a massive bay sink that they had a huge one. And, uh, you know, to get him <laughs> just until the, the rescue arrived or whatever, but it was, uh, it was intense. And I was right there, you know, behind the curtain with all of them during that, that incident. I'll, I'll never forget that. That was my first primal show, and I was about oh. three feet from him, <laughs> filming in the crowd. And uh, my, I brought my buddy who had never been to an independent show, and he brought his two kids who were like nine and ten at the time. <laughs> yeah. oh so it was God. a pretty crazy experience. I'm like, get them back. As soon as I see him with the lighter fluid, I'm like, get them back. Get them away from me. They're doing flaming table. He loved it, and his kids start. loved it. But I was yeah. like, no, get them away. This ain't like. These guys don't know what they're doing. These are independent guys. This ain't like all uh, under control here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was scary. Oh, I was yeah, and they they actually had the shirt after on video. I have the the guys around us next to me picked up the shirt and they had it with burnt skin all on the shirt and everything that Jamie had on. Yeah, it's wow. pretty bad. And that Wakefield show was uh, Astro Man against Jamie Payne, and. Uh, that the week? No, that's uh, bloody. It was Jamie Payne against Nemesis and No Ropes, Bob Wire, New Jack against Astro Man and Cronus and Dave in a four way. Dreamer against Perez. Balsmoni didn't face Scarecrow, but he uh, he came out and chair shot at him. Oh, he that's Scarecrow, what it was. the big chair shot. I did an interview with Scarecrow for my documentary. And he said, uh, when he showed up, they asked him, Have you ever done a chair shot before? And he's like, Oh, yeah, I've done chair shots. He said he'd never done a chair shot before. <laughs> and he's like, you okay with doing a chair shot for balls? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he said he was trying to be a tough guy. He didn't put his hand, hands up or anything. <laughs> Pretty funny, oh the God. interview he, get, he sent me for the documentary, like, telling his experience about the chair shot for balls Mahoney. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be in the, the – what's that? What a chair shot to take with no experience. Right. Well, he said he's seen Bald Mahoney. It's one of the guys he looks up to. You know, what's he, what am I going to do? Say, no, I ain't taking the ball, chair shot from Bald Mahoney. Of course I will. No problem. Uh, <laughs> it's oh funny God. hearing him tell the story. But, yeah, I think I think that was their peak. That Wakefield show, that was their biggest. You know, that's when they peaked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a huge crowd. And their, uh, their fan base, man. If I was their booker or, or owning them, and it's no knock on anybody involved with them. I, I don't think they knew what they had. I think they kind of thought it was going to be there forever. I would have catered to them, and, you know, I, I would have treated them like gold because they, they were something every promoter should look, die to have, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of just faded away. Okay, so I think we got as far as HWF's second show. I think that's yes, where we Master, left off. Master yeah. Uh, from there, we went on to Battle Clash. Battle Clash was the third HWF show that was in 2001. And uh, that was the one that featured Captain Lou Albano as a uh, guest at ringside. He was a manager. Um, another decent crowd at the Seekonk Legion. Uh, pretty packed house. Um, 
Battle Clash was uh, Jamie Payne versus Nemesis, if I remember correctly, uh, in a hardcore match. That was one of the, the higher profile, you know, matches. Put aside. I believe that was my first show going to. Okay. Is that the one where Jamie hit uh, Nemesis with the three hard chair shot? Right on the outside of the ring. Yeah. And it was uh, El Mascarado and uh, Jose in the main event, I think. Uh, possibly. I think they wrestled twice for me. They, yeah, they had a singles, I believe, at Battle Clash. And then at Ring Wars 2, they ended up having a two out of three falls match. Yeah, I just found the paper. Yeah, oh, El Mascarado, Marcus O'Middleton was the ref. Uh, Travis Funk defended a U.S. title against Dan Benadandi. I can never say his name. Oh, Dan Benadandi. Benadandi, yeah, there you go. Sorry about that, Dan. Uh, Danger Boy, Alfredo, and Wolverine with Captain Lou Albano. That was Neil Bano was there against Sonny D in the hot throb. Robbie Ellis against Kid USA with GQ Smooth three-way match. TJ Richter against uh, Kevin Charisma. Tag Team Battle Royal for the tag titles. Scarecrow against Pretty Boy Hernandez and Marcus O'Middleton. Oh, Marcus O'Middleton middle uh, interview started it off with El Mascarado and Jose came out. That started off the show. Yes. Yep. Yep. I think that Battle Royal was supposed to be won by Donnie Rotten and Mr. Biggs, if I remember correctly. And Mr. B Biggs uh, broke his ankle or something and had to be carried out. So we had to pull an audible a minute. You still there, Joe? You froze up on me. Yep, I'm still here. Oh, there you go. You, you didn't. Yeah, that was my first HWF show. Okay. I think I had found out about it through Jamie and Nemesis because I had been seeing them. And they were like, hey, we're over here for Joe. And I think I had met you by then. I think that's when I had first met you a little before this. Yep. Because maybe, were you announced a Primal by that time, maybe? Or UCW, maybe? Yes. Yeah, I was already with Primal. I probably met you there and come over with you and Jamie and everybody saying, hey, we're over here. And Okay, I'll come over. <laughs> exactly. Yep, Primal. And going back. They were another promotion that I, uh, you know, ring announced full time for for a while. Um, my first show, I took over from Mike Messier, who was the ring announcer. And... Uh, that was at the Woburn, Massachusetts Indoor Soccer Arena, if I remember correctly. Um, but it was a stack, stack lineup. They had uh, the SAT. They had the Amazing Red, Brian XL. You know, they had that whole crew on the show. Um, some new faces and some, some faces that you had heard about that were kind of on the way up. So that was cool. Yeah, they had Z-Bar on that show. Uh, That's right, Brian XL, Quiet Storm. They had a bunch of the Philly guys that were up and coming at that time. Ruckus, was he on there? Uh, I don't believe Ruckus Not was that on one. that one. No, he came on the next one. He okay, was at okay. the one in the rain at uh, No Remorse, and then he was on the last one. He was on the next two after that. Okay. Yeah, Zeba was on there. And then they had the six-way with the SAT versus uh, Boogaloo, Brian XL, and Quiet Storm. Wow, you even have that lineup on you. Yeah, I had this all set up, and then I made a mess when I was rushing to get ready for us. <laughs> That's my primal paperwork, though. Nice. <laughs> then I got my HWF paperwork. You left off Ring Wars 2 is the next show? 
Wing Wars 2, that was, that was a big one for me. That was my biggest at that time. Um, well, that was uh, actually, that was my biggest ever, I would say, for HWF. Because, okay. you know, the HWF uh, didn't really uh, go too long. There were spot shows in general. I couldn't run a full-time promotion. I was ring announcing everywhere, you know. Plus, I had a job, you know. It was it was tough. Um, but Ring Wars 2, Legion and Seekonk, that was... Uh, that was the two out of three falls match, Jose Perez and El Mascarado. Um, there was a, I think, a thumbtack match in there, maybe a, a lumberjack match, right? Was it? Or was first it a. Fall, uh, first fall was submission, second fall was uh, lumberjack, third fall was hardcore. Hardcore, that's what it was. And uh, yeah, that was a really fun match, I thought. Um, they did the fireball spot in that. I think he did the flaming gloves, the flaming hands. Oh, that, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, Might have done the, you know, the lumberjacks too. All, and the, the lumberjacks all got involved. Uh, the crowd was really into it. And that was, at that point, um, my biggest crowd. There was 200 standing room only in that little American Legion. And uh, we had to bring the chairs up from downstairs in the bar area. People were standing. I mean, it was great. And uh, Power Company Twins were on the show with uh, Tiger Mulligan out of Connecticut. Uh, they went against Kevin Landry and uh, Samu of the Head Shrinkers, which was a big uh, surprise. A lot of people didn't know he was going to be there. And he wasn't really doing a lot of shows at that point uh, in, in our area. So that was a, a cool deal. And uh, Big Rick Fuller, he teamed up with them. And uh, what else was on that show? We also had uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka against Derek Destiny. You know, Snuka was uh, a big attraction for that. Brought in a lot of people. Um, we had Judas Young against Jeff Starr. Jeff Starr out of New York. Judas Young out of New Jersey. So some fresh faces. Uh, Jeff Starr was managed by Miss Kara Slice, who uh, went on to the WWE known as Cherry. Managed Deuce and Domino, um, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's always nice to work with people before they make it big and uh, somebody that you can respect because uh, she was very nice, just so nice to work with. Yeah, and uh, Mr. Biggs and. Uh... Donnie Rotten. Was he going by Brian Wyatt or something on that show? Is he using a different Brian name what? on that show? I don't think so, no. For some reason I got written up Brian Wyatt, a.k.a. Donnie Rotten. Huh. No, I think at that point they were big and dangerous, Mr. Biggs and Donnie Rotten. Yeah, it says big and dangerous, AKA Mr. Biggs and Brian Wyatt, a.k.a. Donnie Rotten. I don't know why I wrote that. Versus Dan Bayadondi and Widowmaker with a chance for the tag titles. Before the match, turns on Dan, takes on Biggs' place, so Kevin Charisma joins the match. Widowmaker turns on Dan before the match. That's right, he made the turn. Yep. Sometimes I yeah, put notes made... on the matches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he made the turn, and yep, Hugo took his... Uh... Took a spot. I remember that now. And Wolverine and Danger Boy takes on Sunny D and the Hot Throb. But I think the Hot Throb was going by Dwayne something on the show. So the Hot Throb was Danny Kama, um, but he was Lee Norfolk okay. on that show. Yeah, Sometimes Lee I don't quite catch the names. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Danny Kama was a, a solid worker. Uh, he wrestled all over the New England scene. Uh, he wrestled a lot of uh, superstars tapings and stuff. Um, I know he worked with Papa Shango, worked with Shawn Michaels, uh, worked with a host of people. So uh, he was definitely a good hand. And Sonny D, you know, I, he went from Iceberg to Sonny, I'm not a chicken D. Did the, uh, the comedy gimmick there. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 
I seen it at your show and I shake my head, but somebody brought that up on my, uh, my group the other day and was making fun of it. And I said, you know, I did the same thing and shook my head, but it was over. You can't deny it wasn't over. Every kid and woman and everybody was into it. When that come over, everybody's doing chicken dance and yeah. Say what you you want. It was over. Yeah. You had to have something for everybody. It was just a good, uh, you know, comedy deal at that time. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So Thanksgiving Meltdown 2 uh, was November of 2001. Yep. Uh, we brought in some new faces again. Uh, sure thing, Ryan Wing. Um, that was uh, a fundraiser event for the Red Cross, I believe, uh, right after the uh, September 11th incidents. And uh, that was my last show for quite some time again that was november of 2001 i didn't run again until the whole foods market block party event in 2010 and then again for whole foods block party in 2011 and those were the last two events for for the hwf Okay, any, uh, just too busy and just get too caught up, you didn't have time for that stuff anymore? Pretty much. Um, At that point, I, you know, started a family um, or expanded my family, I should say. I've got six kids now. (laughs) So, uh, kept me busy and then the full-time job and uh, and then on the side, you know, running other other things with uh, the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, New England Fan fest um you know that's kept me super busy we haven't done anything recently because of of uh the pandemic but um the first new england fan fest was in 2010 i tied it in with the the hall of fame weekend and we had larry zabisco and jimmy snooker and adam bomb and uh I mean, it really took off. People were into it. So we did it again in 2011 uh, during the day and then the Hall of Fame ceremony at night. Uh, 2011, we had Chief J. Strongbow. We had the Strike Force reunion, Rick Martell, Tito Santana. We had Howard Finkel. Um, We had uh, Head Trinker Samu with that one. Uh, Jameson Winger from Primetime Wrestling. I was able to find him i'm the you know the person responsible for finding jameson pulling him out back into the public eye and uh you know getting him at a wrestling convention for the first time and uh got him a couple other bookings after that he did some wrestling conventions uh so that was cool to i always try to go for some rare names you just don't see 